In this video, we will be controlling an LED through a button and we will configure it to generate an interrupt every time it's pressed. Then we will create this interrupt handler and in the callback function, we will blink the LED. Here are the steps for the exercise. First, we are going to download a template and here are the other steps. We will see them in a presentation later on. So no need to focus on these right now. And at the same time, we will be looking at the GPIO section of the Zephyr documentation. So I suggest that you have it opened as well. So we can check, for example, the macros from Zephyr and go to this documentation and see what these macros do. So for example, this one configures pin interrupts from a GPIO DT spec. So we will be doing this, checking the step and then going to Zephyr documentation in order to understand the program better. Now we are going to be downloading our template. And let's save it in the folder that we are using for our exercises. And we are going to extract it here. Once it's extracted, let's open Visual Studio Code. You'll be adding an exercise application. Let's open our folder. And let's have our project open. Fundamental listen to exercise two. And this is our main.c file. We can take a look at our code. There are several lines already inserted, but we will be adding lines and code to this in the exercise steps. So here are the exercise steps. Once again, I showed it in a presentation. Step one and two, we already did it. Step three, configure the interrupt. Four, define the callback function. Define a variable type of GPIO callback. Initialize this variable, add the callback function. Get rid of all the polling code that we did previously, etc. Now, what we are going to do is the GPIO pin interrupt configure DT, here are its parameters. First one is the button. But what does this button refer to? Let's check that once again. So this is the definition of that button. We had done it already in the previous exercise. And this one is for choosing when it's going to be activated. So let's check these interrupt configuration flags. You can see that there are several options that we can choose rising edge falling edge both edges which we will be working on it later on and this one is the edge to active so this one is selected so once we click on the button we will have this rising edge and it will be activated so this is the button press and once we press the button it goes to logical one, and this is the active session. Next step, we will be defining the callback function. So these are the parameters of it. We have three parameters, as you can see. And what it does inside the function is toggling the LED that we already identified. So if we look at this GPR pin toggle, what it does is toggle pin level from a GPR DT spec, so GPR specification from device three. So that will be the LED. And where do we get that LED from? Let's check the code once again. Here is our definition for the LED. We will be defining variable type GPIO callback. So this is the line for that. And here we will be defining the button underscore callback underscore data. So let's find the GPIO callback, this one. So it is used to register a callback in the driver instance callback list. Then for setting it, we will use GPIO init callback, which we will see later on. So this one is that GPIO init callback. 
So the parameters are, let's check it from the Zephyr documentation. You can see that first one is the callback, which is the button underscore CB data. Second one is the handler, which is our function button press. So you can link it right here. And the third one is the pin mask. We get it by this bit button dot pins. And next step is the add the callback function. So GPA underscore add dot underscore callback. This is for adding an application callback. So you can see that we set the first parameter as button dot port and the second one is button underscore callback underscore data which is linked to this variable okay so let's start these steps we will be copying and pasting these steps from the documentation from the exercise step four step five step six And this is step seven. So we will remove the polling quote, these two lines. These were in our previous LED example. So we got rid of those and we will increase this sleep timer. And now we are going to build it and flash it to our board as we did previously. So we click on build, we choose our device, which is singing 91. And then we click on build configuration. So it's going to take some time, but I will trim this section for you. Otherwise it would take a couple of minutes. So our build is complete and we are going to set our device in DFU mode. But first let's check the previous configuration. You can see that once we opened it, it's blue LED is turning on. Once we press the button, this comes from the previous exercise because the blue LED was the LED2. You can remember that now we are setting the device in DFU mode by pressing the switch and turning it on. Now it is in DFU mode and we will open NRF Connect for desktop. And then we are going to open the programmer. Okay, click on open for the programmer and we will be Selecting our device first, thing in IT1, and then we will be clicking on Add File, Browse, and we will go to our exercise to build to Zephyr folder, and we will select app underscore sign.hex, and we will be clicking on Write, and we will proceed with Write again. It will take a couple of seconds. In this one, it took 19 seconds, and our code is on the device right now, so you can see that our configuration is LED zero. So we are expecting the red LED to be on once we turn the device on. You can see that the red LED is on from the start. I will tell you why this is happening. So once we click the button, it's toggled and it's off. Once I click on again, it's again toggled, it's on, it's off, and it goes on like this. So it will toggle as we click on the button. So now let's change this LED to LED1, which is the green LED. And this one is the GPIO int edge to active. This means that on the active selection of the interrupt, we will be toggling it. Now we can select both edges. So let's copy this one and paste it in our code. So what will happen is each time I press and release the button, we will be triggering the interrupt. So you will see the effect. So we are building it once again. And build is complete. 
So let's check if our hex file is updated in Zephyr folder. So the time is matching. Yes, it's updated. Now we can set our device again in DFU mode. While turning it on, we press the button. Okay, it's in the FU mode and we can select our device. Then add our file. We will be adding the same file, but this time it's updated with the code. We click on right. It takes again 19 seconds to complete. And let's turn our device off and on to see the effect. You can see that this time the green LED is on as we specified in the code. But this time when I press the button, it will be off and I release it, it will be on again. So we are activating the interrupt in both edges, in the rising edge and in the falling edge. So when I press and release the button, I trigger the interrupt. When I press it, it's off and then I release it, it's on. Now let's check one last thing you can see that the led is on whenever we program the device so it's active once we upload the code this is because of this line so you can see that gpio underscore output underscore active means that gpio pin is set as output and it is initialized as logic one so if i set this one to inactive instead of active and save it and build the application once again, I will be expecting the LED to be off once I load my firmware to the device. So let's do this. Let's again set the device in the FU mode once again. Okay. And now we will select our device once again in the programmer, thingy 91. We will choose our code once again, the same code, but again, it's updated. You can check that it's updated from the time. And we will click on write once again. It's going to take again, this time 18 seconds to upload. And we will turn the device off and on to see the effect. You can see that once I turn it on, the LED is not on this time. So it will be toggled once I press the button. Previously, it was off, uh, sorry, it was on in the beginning. This time it's off. So this is because of this line.